Well, this is my go-to guitar. It's a um, it's a historic reissue of the 1959. It's, a, it's got the 59 uh, Seymour Duncan pickups in it, and I don't know if you're familiar. You know these Bigsby's that you can put on without having to drill any holes. You can it, it can come off. Mm -hmm. um, I, I watched. A lot of, first, I read Neil Young's book, and then I I've been a fan of his for a long time, and I. Uh, I'd, I'd already put one on, on these, uh, one of these on this guitar. After I read the book and I got into all of this, I was buying stuff and, you know, as the book went along, uh, I wound up just putting these on everything. It, it, if it doesn't move, it's got one of these on it. Mm -hmm. But, because uh, it, it's gentle, you know, the Bigsby right. is just gentle, it's not a whammy bar. Right. And I use it occasionally, but I just, I just like it. Uh, the years went by where I thought these were the dumbest thing to have on a guitar. And then I would watch Neil Young play it, and I'm like, no, this is one of the most awesome things to put on a guitar. <laughs> it was all about his technique, huh? Yeah. Uh, and so, so and, and we've, we've pretty much got it under control where it, it stays in tune. If, if it goes out every once in a while, I can just give it a bump like that, and it goes back. Nice. Um, uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's got a lot of miles on it. This was just a really excellent example of the guitar. I have had it uh, refretted. Uh, they've leveled out the fretboard on it because this, this guitar has been hundreds of thousands of miles over the roads and, and mountains and back of a truck and through the winter and you know it's wood. So uh, last year we, we took the fretboard off and, uh, and uh, now it's, it's all sweet again. It's all sweet all the way up to the top. You said you refretted it? Yeah. Put the stock size frets back on. Jumbo frets in there. Yeah. And the pit guard comes on, goes back on, and then you know. Depends on your mood. Yes. And but it's it's a, and it's just a heavy one. I just prefer the heavy guitars, you know, because when you're when you're moving around, it's it's not it doesn't feel like just a this it feels real. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like the weight of it. I know they. Go to great lengths to make them lighter, and I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Mm -hmm. I like it feels like a less Paul mm -hmm. solid body mahogany. It's mahogany. It ought to be heavy. If it's ten pounds, it's good. It's. It, I, I'm not. I think this one might be eleven. <laughs> it's it's heavy, but I'm I'm so used to it. Um, so I, you know, I've got the uh, the accesses and they're they're lighter, they're chambered and they're you know they're yeah. a great instruments. They're different instrument altogether, you know, the integrated uh, Floyd Rose, but um, this is this is the one, if the, the building was on fire and I had to grab one, I would, I think I would grab that one, well, I, I would, I would have a handful, but this would be the first one. <laughs> what year did you say it was? It's, it's, uh, and Jimmy was saying it was 99, 1999 it was made, uh, and uh, I, mean, I, I got it from Norms, so it was, Pretty new right after that. Yeah, and you use it for what percent of the show, roughly? Uh, I, I probably use this one more than any other ones. Uh, probably three, four, probably four songs. Okay. Just depends on what the set list is. Right. But it's always the go-to guitar. That some some years I'll use it, you know, for for a third of the show. Mm -hmm. But it just depends on what I've got on deck, and you know, I've got I've got a couple of them that I'm I'm really hot on, like the uh, 335 and the the um, the uh, Les Paul Custom, the, the, it's, I'm not sure if it's a 61, 62, or 63, but it's that era, the one where it's the white, looks like a white SG, mm -hmm. three pickups. So I, I, that one got refretted too this, this past year. Um, so I just go, uh, it, it's just what, what's appealing to me somehow. Yeah. They all, they kind of talk to you and tell you, you know, time to play me. <laughs> and I, I heard something Jack White uh, said, I think it was in it. It might, uh, it might get loud. It might, uh, where he's talking about, I, he like he likes to fight the guitar, and I, because I, I get, I have a short attention span, and I, I, I like switching guitars, and so I'm always having to like, okay, this is where that is, and this is where, you know, it it keeps me on my toes, it keeps me connected to the guitars. I'm not just, you know. I, I don't want it to become exactly like just an, an appendage. I like to know that it's this yeah. thing that I got to deal with yeah. over here. It requires your attention. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
what more do you want to talk about with the uh, uh, 335? The 335, I got the day that we filmed that uh, the Grand Illusion pieces of eight DPD. We shot it in Memphis, and that afternoon uh, that we sh that we shot it, I went over to the Gibson showroom over there at the factory, and they had one on the wall. And I'd been thinking about getting another one, I had a, a white one, and uh, so I I told Jason, take a, take a picture of me with this thing, and because I wasn't sure of whether I wanted a, a cherry or what, so he took a picture with me with that. So, Let's go see if they'll let me borrow it. So. <laughs> He talked to the manager, and uh, you can see I never gave it back. Yeah. So they they, they gave it to me, nice. and uh, we put one of these on it, yeah. and uh, just changed out a few little bits and pieces of it, uh, mostly cosmetic. Uh, but I have to say that guitar right out of the shop is just is brilliant. I mean, it's nice to know they're making. I mean, an awesome instrument just right off the line like this it's in the custom good. shop. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think they're stock pickups still. And then the SG. The SG, I got off eBay about six years ago. And uh, in, the, in the pictures on uh, eBay, it looked like this had been kind of gnarled up and epoxied, the, you know, the nut. And, uh, but I thought, you know, it, we'll fix it up. It was just bad pictures. When I got it, it was almost pristine. Wow. And they said it was a 68. Um, so we, you know, the back of it looked, you know, about like that. It was just no belt buckle rash on, it looked like the front. Uh, and I kept it at home for a little bit. And but I'm not really a guitar collector. I'm a, I like to play them. And when I'm playing them, I got to wear a belt because I wear a pack. Mm -hmm. So you, you're going to have belt buckle rash. They're just, they're going to get, they're going to be exposed to the weather and to the. Uh, sweat and belt buckle and all that stuff so eventually I just said bring it out I want to play it and it's such a sweet guitar on stage uh, it's just you know it's it's very lightweight it's such a different animal than everything else it's got the jumbo frets on it uh, and and it was right out of the box I mean all we did to it was just tighten up the screw it was it was so much nicer than it was in the pictures it uh, it was made in Kalamazoo it, uh, let's see, it lived in New York, it went to, um, went to Argentina, spent most of its life there, came back to California, and that's where I got it from. We recently, because um, I never really checked the serial numbers or anything on it, but Jimmy recently did a little truss rod adjustment and found a note, a little tiny note in there, and it says it's a 66. So nice little note with serial number on it and it was like this little t like a message in a bottle yeah. so we stuck it back in there what is that for tail piece is that the, is that the maestro vibrato or yeah okay yeah i don't use it i just keep it tucked under yeah like, like most guys have yeah vibrato. yeah i don't i don't need one of these on the that, that guitar just seems too delicate for for doing all that yeah and you said it's a three pickup it's a two oh no this is the red one this oh, is the, the, the okay. S, okay. sg okay uh, and it, you know those guitars are so delicate and they're thin and this one that one doesn't have the volute you know the little the little where there's a little extra wood right back there and what usually happens to those over the years is and that, you know, I did it too back in the 70s when I you know you're playing in a club and you're through and you set it down you see some girl and you walk you go like that and you walk up and puts in the strap, <laughs> falls over and it goes bam and it breaks right there and or right there. And you can fix them. Most most of the ones you see are uh, have repairs on them and they're, they, they're, they're fine. But that one, nothing. And, and it doesn't have the bullet so it's even thinner right there. So it's just, it's been loved and now it's it's gone to work in its old age. Probably loves life right back. It loves. It gets to see Jimmy Johnson every day. You know, my guitars that I keep at home, they're pristine. They got no rash on them, but they're counting on me. You know, I'm like the field doctor. You know, who hasn't really gone to medical school. Yeah. 
so I can I can I can change this stuff out, but I want to I place, you know. So I've got a '68 uh, uh, Rickenbacker 360 that uh, my wife gave me for my birthday a few years ago, and it's beautiful. It's fire glow, uh, and it's got that pointy, uh, you know, the whammy bar on it. I think it's like the one that Pete Townsend impaled himself on. And I can see why. I've been wanting to bring it out here, but it's just so pristine. I go back and forth. I had it out, I was going to bring it, and I didn't bring it. But it, again, it sits at home and waits for me to take care of it. And I, I recently restrung it the other day, and I, I don't know that much about Rick's. So I took the strings off. Of course, everything just fell apart oh, yeah. down there. So I think the I think the bridge is on backwards, but I got the everything. <laughs> it's it's. It works, but I think eventually I'll bring it back up because it's such, I mean, it's just, it's sweet. Do you see, have you thought about what songs you play that on? No, song? it would just have to tell me. Oh. You know, I'd play it and see what works. Because that'd be some pretty dramatically different tone. I know, I know. That's the fun. I know, at this point, like I play the uh, SG on Lady, and it's the wrong guitar. But I, I go in, in the middle position, and I just get I, I get enough of a, you know, I just, just pots up a little bit, a little bit more on, on, on the neck pickup, and I get a pretty, you know, that should be a Fender, right. playing those those, or the whatever that is on the, in the second verse. <laughs> so so it's the wrong guitar, but you know, just for one song. I just love playing, and it sounds great in the choruses. Um, so, now is the three pickup one out? With you? Yes. Okay. Now let's start, start the show with that one. Okay. That's one that we got from Norm years ago, and all of us thought that it had the break right here and here because the the paint was all you could. It had been touched up by the owner. You could tell. And uh, it was just, the, the frets were all worn. It's little frets to begin with. That's the way they made the guitar, kind of fretless wonder. And they'd been worn down. Uh, and it, it, it just had kind of a rough life. The electronics were, had, you know, they were intermittent. And so I would play it on a song, and every once in a while I'd have to hit it to get it to come back. You know, we're trying to leave it alone. And uh, eventually it didn't come back one night, and so we said, okay, let's send it to Scotty Pike. You know, and, uh, and, and he took it apart and just did the minimal amount of finish removal just to see what was what, to see if it needed to be re-glued or something. It wasn't broken. It wasn't cracked. It wasn't broken. It wasn't cracked. So it was, it was a pristine guitar under some bad paint. So he did a really nice job of restoring the paint. Uh, and. Uh, put jumbo frets on it and now it's just it's killer so it's 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 close to being original as you can we just fixed the things that were that were keeping it from being a working guitar and uh, you know it's and it sat at home for years um, you know thinking that it was just a nice relic you know and now it's out here working it's got a little lease on life nice any other guitars in the rack that you use a lot so we should get to the amps, if not. Um, well, the the telly is one. I got the telly off the rack, and when we, when we got back together in 1999, and I had broken all my tellies back in the old days and sticks. I didn't have a single one left. I cool. smashed them, smashing them on stage, and being, you know, it was my therapy. I don't remember that part of the show back in the day. It wasn't every night. It was just. <laughs> It's just every once in a while. Okay. We play a lot, you know. And we're always fighting, and there's shit going on in the band. So that was my way of, of working it out. And I'll show you, JY. Why smash this guitar? <laughs> so, so I wanted to tell you. So I just went and got just a made in the USA one, black with that with the maple neck, that kind of yellow, solid maple neck. And uh, and, and you, I don't know if you've seen Ricky's. Bass is his black Fender bass that he he did with the checkerboard binding and his black body. I haven't seen it in person. But it's, we did a song and I'm standing up there and I saw a picture of me with that guitar up next to his Fender and I was like, this thing's this looks like shit. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice guitar. It plays good. Right. Actually, what happened was uh, 
I put it in the closet at home, in my guitar closet at home, and it lived there about about ten years. And then uh, I, I had just a little, you know, uh, kind of a crappy SG, a new one, just as a rehearsal guitar in the dressing room. When we uh, played with Ario Speedwagon on this Can't Stop Rocking tour, at the end of the night we would all come out, everybody in both bands, depending on who closed, the other band would come out and we would play this song that we wrote together and uh, everybody, drummers, Todd would be, Todd, so Todd got tired of playing the tambourine, he said, can I play your SG out there? So he plays it a couple times, he's doing towns and stuff, and one night he just decides to take it off and, and smash it on stage. I was like, you didn't mention you were going to do that. And he's like, I know, I got carried away. Um, so they got me another one, but it would, this just happened to be a decent, you know, one of those Korean um, SGs. So I went home and I pulled the, uh, the telly out of the closet. I said, this will, this will be all right for a dressing room guitar. And something happened while it was in that closet for 10 years. It just, it got better. All of a sudden, it's because it didn't really sound that good in the beginning. I brought it out here. Remember, we plugged it in. It was like, this thing sounds good. Something it's, happened that I would. Yeah, yeah, it's ugly, but it's so. Uh, Adam Reber made me a neck. He measured it exactly from uh, Floyd Upgrades. Uh, so it's exactly the same neck, but it's beautiful bird's eye maple, and then it's with a with a pearlescent uh, uh, binding on it, uh, painted. Uh, Headstock, some cool diamond inlays, and an ebony fretboard, jumbo frets on it, and one of these, of course. <laughs> You'll have one of these on you before this is over with. <laughs> if you stand still like that. So that's the telly. Uh, we, the only thing that's really original on it, we got, and we got these is it lace pickups. We'll put lace sensors in there. Lace sensors. It's a little noisy. Because you know how tellies are so, uh, and there's. Times when I get down near the edge of the stage when it's near some of the gear and it would always get noisy. So these these are like quieter. So it's now it's this hot rotted guitar. And it's gone from being this okay thing that got better to it's really a, a beast of a Telecaster. The only thing that's left is the uh, the uh, body which got way too much paint on it. But I, I think I'm gonna because everything's good on it, it sounds good. I'm leaving it alone. Oh, there's the, uh, the, the uh, another 68, the uh, Fender Electric 12 string. That's a sweet guitar. Color? It's Sunburst. Okay. So we've got two of them. We got one in an A rig and one in a B rig. And every, I keep, uh, I'll think this is, this is the one. This, yeah. And I'll go play the other one. And, no, that one sounds better. <laughs> and then I'll come back, you know, they, they're, both, they're both a little bit different. One's a year younger and one's, you know, there's 67 and a 68. They're both sunbursts. Both mm -hmm. bursts. Yeah. And those tend to be, you, when you find them, you usually find them in pretty good shape because how much are you going to play a guitar yeah. like that? You know, you can't do a gig, you can't be the electric 12 string. I mean, I suppose you could, but not many bands just have a dedicated electric 12 string player. <laughs> not since the birds. That's, that's the only one I can think of. <laughs> what songs do you use it on? Sweet Man of Blue. Okay. That was the only one, right? Yep. Yeah. But it's the right guitar for that song. Sure. Have mercy. Sure. I tried playing it on a, I've got a black Rickenbacker. And and I don't have huge hands, but to, to arpeggio, to do the arpeggiated thing on there, you just, you can't, you can't get enough uh, space in there to, right. Right around there to do it. Where, where did you record that song? It was recorded with one of those. Oh, that's right. I didn't. I wasn't on the recording. Okay. But that's what he used on it. Okay, they did use a Fender 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's like a piano. Yeah. That thing is so nice. And it sounds good dirty, too. We, we, we crank it up and put, uh, you know, put gain on it for the choruses, and it sounds great. We should get to the amplifiers on the rig. All right. What, okay. what are they? Uh, you can run through them real quick. Yeah. It's the three-channel, what's it called? The, it's a uh, JCM 2000 series, TSL 100s. Um, they've gone through some changes since we got them. Um, we've put mercury transformers all through it, including a choke on the uh, on the mains. Um, 
the jacks on, on those heads are typically right on a circuit board. If you open the head up and look at it, everything goes to circuit boards anymore, unlike the old days where there was wires going to different things. And uh, that's going to break at some point. So I've had all those changed so there's wires uh, going into circuit boards now so that the, the little bit of movement that they do get isn't going to affect that board because it loosens up and then all of a sudden your send is gone and then the whole thing goes down. So that's been done to it. Um, we're using SED um, tubes. They're, I think they're Svetlana tubes actually, but uh, they work really well for us. They give us a lot of drive and uh, they've got a really nice classic tone. Um, and other than that, they're they're pretty much stock. It's what we want in a head. You know, it's a, it's a very versatile three-channel Marshall head. And um, other than that, we realized not too many years ago that the TSL actually stood for Tommy Shaw lead. So we put oh. yeah, so we put Tommy Shaw nameplates <laughs> on them. <laughs> and so that's what we're using for heads. Yeah. How about effects? I'm sorry. Effects. What's what the effects? Uh, we don't rely on a lot of effects, but what we do have, we've got a Boss flanger that we use in one with everything. Uh, also, uh, Dunlop Univibe also used in that song. Um, Boss Chorus is used in the solo for Lorelei. Um, and sometimes in the clean parts, if we're doing pieces of eight, um, a Boss DD7 delay, anytime um, we add delay to a solo, like it really battens things up in Tommy Solo and uh, Crystal Ball. Uh, we also use it um, in Come Sail Away. And that's the time effects. All stomp boxes. Yeah, everything stomp boxes. We, we, you know, over the years we've gone through everything, but this is what works for us. And this, the rack mount pieces are trying to be sound like stomp boxes. Let's use stomp boxes. And on the front end, um, we have a, a Keeley compressor and uh, a Digitech, uh, group, uh, what's it called, a Bad Monkey uh, tube overdrive pedal, tube simulation overdrive pedal. And today we were experimenting with a uh, Keeley modified um, tube, screamer. tube screamer for solos. It sounded really good and uh, we're gonna go with that tonight. And we don't need a lot, we don't have a lot of noise generated in this system, but some buildings power is less than perfect and if there's a bit of noise uh, we use a decimator noise reduction system in there just to kind of clean it up a little bit but we're pretty much on top of killing the lead channels in between songs and stuff like that and over in guitar world we're doing all of that so in between songs we're putting it on clean and, and we really don't rely on much noise reduction the only other thing we have uh, gear wise that's important is our Palmer speaker simulators and we use those on both of Tommy's uh, channels. JY uses them, we use them on the bass. So we don't have any live cabinets on stage anymore. Um, if it's possible, they might sound better than a Marshall 412 without all the headaches mm -hmm. and everything that else goes along with that. We tried everything. We tried the ISO cabinet just sitting backstage, murdering every, anyone in his path. And then we had these huge ISO cabs that would have held, you know, that table right there. It opened up. Uh, so two of us each, so we had four of those. And, you know, the 58 mounted in one end, and, then, or, you know, it's in front of it, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was, there was a sliding bar mechanism that I built in there, and you could adjust the mic placement depending on what was being asked for. But And we, we AB'd the Palmers, and it was like, we picked up a lot of trunk space yeah. and our sound is consistent and that's the most important thing. And also for the, and for the mixes it's, it's so great because you can place, because we have stereo, you know. Yeah. So you can place anybody anywhere and it's, that's where you're getting, you're not getting drums. You know. Very cool. Yeah, he's not fighting anything coming off the stage or front of house engineer. It's just, you know, he's like sitting it's like, in a control it's like a room. studio mix. It's yeah. pretty neat for him. Look at it. Yeah. We're good? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Until we, yeah, until we when I come out. take that off.